Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the show. I don't know, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, 35 years ago, 45 years ago, I can actually remember things. <laughs> I'm now 53 years of age, and I can actually remember those things that happened 35, 45 years ago. I not only can remember what happened, but I can actually remember who said it, or what they were wearing, or what time of day it was, or what we all looked like. Now, it's extraordinary. 15 seconds ago, I can't remember what happened. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, um, or the world is getting more confusing, but there are, there are certain elements in life which I find very puzzling. I mean, why, if I'm tired, do I always have to get up out of bed early? <laughs> I mean, I always have to do that. If I'm tired, I have to get out of bed early. If I'm not tired, I can lie there all bloody day and do nothing. <laughs> Why is it when I set my alarm clock, I lie awake all night waiting for the bloody thing to go off? <laughs> it goes off, I go to sleep. <laughs> there are extraordinary things like, puzzling things like, when you're looking for your key, or your wallet. They're always in the last place that you look. You understand? It's a kind of sod's law, or Murphy's law, the, the, the logic of which is never look in the first place, always look in the last place, because that's where it'll be. And you follow that logic through, and it's not true. You go to the last place, and it's not bloody there. It's in the first place. <laughs> and in, this, uh, in the society we have, we, have you noticed how we're, we're a society of gadgetry now? Not, not only do we have gadgets, but they confuse us. A couple of years ago, for we people who could not find our keys, somebody invented a little, a little gadget, a little key ring, that when you stamped or whistled, this thing would react. Beep, 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 beep. From somewhere, from everywhere. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> you had a whole nation walking around going... Wouldn't it be nice if they had little voices say, hello, darling, I'm here. <laughs> now they're defunct. Nobody wants those things. There's bloody mountains of used key rings sitting on a kind of big graveyard of key rings, all sitting there. Somebody by, goes by and goes, <whistles> and the whole mountain goes, <laughs> I'm 53 years of age. And you would actually think, after 53 years of living on this earth, I'm capable of opening something like a milk cart. <laughs> no chance. No chance. I mean, they have the arrows. Pull arrows this way, push, pull, and push. <laughs> I mean, are, they, are those people who manufacture cartons in league with dry cleaners? <laughs> Jeez, to this day, I always get the wrong sign. I always go, oh, my God. <laughs> why, don't, why don't I just get a scissors, cut the top off, and pour the crap into a jug? <laughs> That would be too easy. I mean, what, what about sellotape? I mean, you'd actually think in this day and age, somebody could invent sellotape that you could get off the roll without going out of your mind. <laughs> I mean, I pick up a piece of sellotape, and I'm still there an hour later, I'm going... <laughs> and you just become, you become a lunatic. is burning out inside you. My daughter, who's a total genius with, with sellotape, she'll just walk up to a sellotape roll and she'll just go... And she's got it straight. No peering, no, none of that. And she'll, just, she'll make a car... She'll, she'll just... Go, making up a parcel. Me! Making up a parcel. I need five arms and eight legs. <laughs> and I'm there with it. And she'll say things like, I'll do it for you, Dad. I said, no, I'll do it for you, Dad. <laughs> and, you, and, you're going, and you're going around, and you're around, and you're about to commit suicide, and it gives you a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. You get the, you get the edge starts to come up. Ah, aha, 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 aha. Got it, got it. See, I can do it all by myself now. Ha, ha, zzzz, sliver. Try it again. <laughs> I mean, the world, what it, it's like the world is combining to drive me around mad. 
Things like cling film. In Australia, they call it wrap around. <laughs> wrap around. Cling film. I see people, they just take it out and just go. It just rolls out. Like a, like a waterfall, it just goes. And they go right across the serrated edge. And fine, they've got a piece, like a sheet, glass. And they wrap things up. Me. It's a rope. <laughs> Nine yards of plastic rope to put around a piece of cheese. <laughs> or if I do get it, I go. I put, I got, it climbs up itself. Have you seen? <laughs> And there's another confusing thing. I will go, I will go and buy a piece of cheese, say a pound piece of cheese. I love cheddar cheese. I go to a place and buy it. It's always wrapped up in that stuff. I will take it home. I will unwrap it. I will take the cheese away. I will cut half the cheese off. I will eat that half a pound of cheese. Now I have a half a pound of cheese. And I have, should have twice as much cling foam to wrap around the half a pound. <laughs> But in between eating that bloody cheese, half this crap has gone somewhere. Where's it gone? <laughs> I spent the next 25 minutes trying to put this big... <laughs> and you'd actually think when it comes to uh, all sorts of things, to make our lives easy, instructions. Wouldn't it be so much easier to have easy instructions? I mean, bottle tops and things like that. Push down, turn either way. <laughs> I'm standing there like a dick going, Line up arrows and push off. You push off, you little bastard. <laughs> Take cap off and push up bottom. <laughs> Why do I have to take my cap off? <laughs> what if I don't have a cap? Do I have to go out and buy a cap? If I shove something up my bottom, my bloody cap's gonna come off anyhow. <laughs> Keep out of reach of children. That's why you push it up there. That'll never, that'll never get it up there. What's the fun there? Childproof. I mean, what, what is this? Childproof bottle tops. Medical bottle. Have you come? Have you gone through that lot? You have a minor headache. And it says, press, turn, push, lift, twist. Press, turn, push, lift. Twist. Press, turn, twist, lift, push. Push, turn, lift, twist. Push, push, push. I don't know about 10 minutes, I'm a lunatic. I have a blinding headache I didn't have. Press turn! I'm trying to use my teeth. My children come in, I go, can you open them? They go, yes, there you are, Daddy. <laughs> and why is it? Have you ever noticed when you're walking down the road and you trip up? Have you noticed when you're walking down the road? You, you look around, there's nothing there. There's the other thing, cow shit. Cow shit. <laughs> when I was a kid in Ireland, I always walked in cow shit. Now I'm a, I'm a man in London, dog shit. <laughs> I mean, it is extraordinary. If there's a piece of dog shit in the streets, of my feet hone in on it. <laughs> like a bloody Polaris missile. <laughs> dog shit, dog shit, here, dog shit. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing, oh, gee, that's, that is the worst thing in the world, to know that you're walking down a solid pavement, you're going, tunk, 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 and suddenly it's, tunk, <laughs> There's nothing where you go, ah, oh, gee. You always, I mean, you always wipe it, you always go, yeah, yeah. When somebody else comes around the corner, <laughs> One piece of dog shit within an hour can be all over the world. <laughs> Come around the top, they take it down the road, they bring it into the house, in the bathroom, into t taxis, out to the airport, on the bloody airplane, in America, dog shit, one piece of dog shit floating all over the world. <laughs> I live in a street in London, it's bloody Turd Terrace. <laughs> One of the dogs just come into my house and shit in there and cut out the middleman. <laughs>
The local, the local councils actually think they're doing things like by produ dog lavatories in parks. Dog lavatories. I live near Holland Park. There's a, there's a, a sand pit about eight foot by ten with a sign that says dog lavatory. <laughs> I do not know of a dog in the world that can read English. <laughs> The sandpit is always filled with little kids who can't read English either. <laughs> Sitting there <laughs> And there are other things in my life. Where do my socks go? Where, where do... I have drawers full of single socks. <laughs> Unmatching. Where are they? I will, take, I will take a pair of socks. I've tested this out. I'll take a pair of socks down to the washing machine. I will put them in. When they're done, I will open that up. There'll never be two socks in there. There'll be one or three. And if there is two, there'll be odd ones. Shoes, there's, a, there's another. How many times have you seen shoes lying around? Always on flat roofs. You look out of a window onto a flat roof, there's always a shoe. I mean, are there hordes of people wandering around with suitcases full of shoes. Listen, go upstairs and throw those out on the roof. <laughs> this is going to drive some bastard mad. Think it. I mean, you go to the remotest part of the world where they don't even wear shoes. You'll find a shoe sitting there. It's like I'm driving up the motorway once. There's a pair of trousers in the middle of the motorway. <laughs> I mean, how in the name of Christ can you lose a pair of trousers on the motorway? You're driving at 90 miles. <laughs> And your girlfriend, a wife, a mistress, oh, darling, yes? Oh, I need you, darling, I need you now. <laughs> well, I'm driving at night, I'm a <laughs> I live in the street every, every 10 days. A man goes up and down the street in a horse and cart. And he comes out and he goes, Scrap iron. <laughs> I, mean, I say to somebody, what's he looking for? Scrap metal, scrap iron. How do they know from I mean there's nothing ever on the cart, the cart's totally empty. Maybe there's something in the world called and we don't know about it. It's all this recy recycling, too. This is another thing. That, uh, everything's being recycled. Bottles, metal, paper. I wonder if they've ever recycled lavatory paper. <laughs> <laughs> condoms, there's a thing. Will they, will they ever recycle condoms? They do it with rubber tires, don't they? <laughs> Retread condoms. <laughs> Guaranteed to do 20,000 miles. That would be nice, though, to walk in and say, can I have a packet of retread condoms, please? They are guaranteed for 20,000 miles. <laughs> condoms. I read uh, recently, because people are concerned about what we would call the population explosion of the world, that certain groups, organizations, are now distributing green condoms. <laughs> are they green condoms? Give you a word of advice. Never wear one of those in the kitchen. <laughs> Wandering through the kitchen with your wife doing the vegetables. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, one, of the, one of the reasons I'm basically this happening uh, with condoms, the, the increased use of condoms, is not, not really anything to do with population explosion, it's to do with trying to control sexually transmitted diseases. And I, I, I do believe that in a few years' time, that when you buy a condom, there'll be a health warning on it. Written in little letters in the rubber, Her Majesty's Government <laughs> wish to inform that sex can be a health hazard. And you'll watch that warning grow before your very eyes. <laughs> Her match. <laughs> not, not only, not only condoms out. 
but they're getting more bizarre. I mean, you have multicolored condoms, multicolored condoms, extra ribbed condoms, glowing condoms, glowing condoms that glow in the dark. Why? <laughs> Help you to read the health warning, I suppose. Imagine lying in bed with a person you love and suddenly there's a power cut, power failure. Oh my Christ, there's a power failure. Oh, damn. Put your condom on. I want to finish this chapter. <laughs> there's a burglar downstairs. Oh, shit, I'll put my condom on. That'll frighten the shit out. <laughs> you imagine a burglar walking around the house and there's a condom glowing coming to walk? <laughs> what about that one of those... Can you imagine a great dramatic scene? A lighthouse? On the edge of the Atlantic, force 10 gale, and the light. And then caught in the light for a brief second, it's a passenger liner just plowing his way through the channel between the rocks, and suddenly there's a power failure. And no light. And the child says to his father, the lightkeeper, Daddy, Daddy, what are we going to do? The ship will run on the rocks. Son, run down to the bathroom. And in that cupboard over the sink, you'll find a packet of three things we don't talk about. <laughs> Bring them back up here. Good boy. Now hold this side and pull. What are we going to do? We're going to stretch this over the top of the lighthouse. <laughs> Won't it break? No, of course it will not break. It's been tested to British standards 3704. <laughs> That's it. Over. And then you cut to the bridge of the ship. Plowing towards the rock. Condom ahead! <laughs> there she glows! <laughs> 700 lives saved by a glowing condom. <laughs> I mean, don't people do particularly peculiar things? I mean, this Richard Branson, he is one of the prime manufacturers of condoms in this country. <laughs> if he's good at making condoms as he is at crossing oceans, I'm not bloody buying one. <laughs> There's a, there's a vast changing attitude in the world. But when I was a child, we, we didn't actually know what condoms were. And if we did know what they were, we didn't talk about them. And if we did talk about them, we always talked about them in a giggling, sneaking. <laughs> and buying your first condom was a, was a male ritual. It was kind of proving your manhood. You always proved your manhood by going in and buying your first condom. And it was always done in a kind of casual way. It always gone. <laughs> and there was always a female in the shop. <laughs> Can I help you? Yes, uh, I'd, I'd like some toothpaste, please. <laughs> uh, what sort? A rubber one, please. <laughs> Nowadays, there's a different, well, not so much now. And there, there, there was also the thing about buying your, your first condom, your contraceptive. You never used it. You always bought it. And you put it in your wallet. And it stayed there for years. You used to take it out occasionally and show it to other people. I'm condom. <laughs> and over the years, the rubber just kind of goes brittle, hard. And it, it gradually begins to emboss itself on your wallet. There's an imprint, a little circle. <laughs> and you can throw the thing away. And for years after, I mean, you look at men's wallets, there's always a little circle. <laughs> the remains of the last condom. That's, that's, that's it. Nowadays, children are much more, much more blase about it. Kids will walk in and say, uh, um, condoms, please. Large size, green, glowing, strawberry <laughs> flavored. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, I'd like something for my pimples. I just gave you that, didn't I? <laughs> Sneaky. My childhood, you see, my childhood was uh, less sophisticated. I was less concerned about things like sex and growing up. Some of my main concerns was things like why mild-mannered Clark Kent was never recognized as Superman. I, mean, I could never figure out. 
This arsehole used to take his glasses off, <laughs> put a body stocking on with his knickers on the outside, <laughs> and nobody recognized them. <laughs> there was another character I used to see as a, as a kid <clears throat> when I went to the movies, which was Zorro. Do you remember Zorro? Zorro was, he wasn't a gunman. Zorro was, uh, he was a great swordsman, marvelous swordsman. And anybody who fought with Zorro, he would always finish up this and a flick of his wrist, he'd go right across the man's forehead, Zorro. <laughs> and this fellow used to forever carry this, the mark of Zorro. What, what if Zorro had been dyslexic? <laughs> the mark of Zorro. <laughs> the mark of Osroz. <laughs> it's not the same, is it? Can you imagine going up to Zorro and saying, excuse me, Mr. Zorro? Yes. Are you, are you the, uh, the great swordsman in the world? Yes, I am. I, I wonder, could I have your autograph? <laughs> no. In the book, you dickhead. The book. <laughs> there, was, there was also, with cinema, there was a greater involvement. We got involved with the cinema. You'd sit in the cinema as a kid, and as soon as the lights went out, we'd all cheer. You go to cinema now, nobody, not a bloody nothing. If the hero was in danger of being attacked by the villain, we used to warn him. Look, he's behind the rock, watch out, he's dead, look, look, dickhead, look, look, he's behind the rock. Any sign of romance, we're all vomiting all over the cinema. He kissed her. Things like Dracula. I mean, I'm very fond of that side of the superstitious and the, uh, the occult. But why is it in those movies about Dracula when everybody will say, don't go near Castle Dracula <laughs> after sunset. Don't go near Castle Dracula. Because it is then that he, who is undead, walks about. How many times have you heard that warning? Everybody says it. Peasants say it. Gentry say it. Everybody says it. Coach riders, they all say it. Don't go near our castle, drag. And these prats always go <laughs> when the sun is going down. Why don't they go at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, have a bloody good walk around, and piss off before the bastard gets up? <laughs> Well, have you ever seen Dracula? Those great fangs? Tonight, tonight, I shall drink your blood. <laughs> In the window. And the people, I mean, they always have garlic strewn all over the place. And crucifixes everywhere. And he goes right through them. What is he, Jewish Italian, for Christ's sake? <laughs> And he bites the neck. And when you see them, have you ever noticed the neck? His fangs are that far apart. The little wounds are less than a sixteenth of an inch. I mean, what does he do when he gets in there? Go, eh. <laughs> There's always that other lot driving in the storm. The couple driving in the storm. The great thunderstorm. Whack, thunder. And flights of lightning. And there on the hill is the most extraordinary looking house. Towers and turrets, gargoyles, shutters, whack, 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 whack. You and I would stay in the car. These assholes go up to the house. <laughs> and the door always opens like it hasn't been open for years. <coughs> and there's only. <laughs> Good evening. The master's not heard no man, but if you'd like to come in and dry yourself by the fire, you may! <laughs> and these idiots go in there! <laughs> I mean, if it was me, all you would see would be a trail of diarrhea across the hill. <laughs> Old movies too, uh, what I would call 
good and evil was very clearly defined in movies. The goody always wore a white hat. Do you remember that? Big white hat. <laughs> the villain always had a black hat. The goody always was clean shaven. The baddie always had stubble. Was picking his teeth. The baddie always ran out of bullets. The goody had an unlimited supply. He just go. <laughs> Hordes of rustlers. <laughs> Bank. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> Have you ever noticed? I mean, there were certain things that used to puzzle me as a child. The 45, the Colt 45, is the most powerful gun in the world. And yet you see somebody shoot somebody in the chest from three feet, they go, and this fellow used to fall forward. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the, uh, the fellow that always says in the saloon, or whatever it might be, in the, in the cowboy picture, I'll cover you from the rooftop. He's dead. He's immediately, he's gone. As soon as he says, I'll cover you from the rooftop, he's always the first one to get it. <laughs> the cowboy's coming down the street, and you <laughs> fell off the roof. <laughs> the other thing is too, when they're in the desert, have you ever seen them in the desert? When they bury somebody in the desert? There's always a wooden cross. <laughs> they live in a, they're in the bloody desert. Where do they get the wood from? <laughs> do they always carry one around in the bag? You got the water? Yeah, I got the water. You got the stem? Yeah, I got the stem. Got some chewing beef? Yeah, I got some chewing beef. You got tobacco? Yeah, I got the black tea. You got the cross? Yeah, I got the cross. <laughs> the other thing is the confusion in movies. Those saloons, they're always, they're always made out of matchbox wood. Aren't they? It's just match wood. You'll see a saloon, you'll see a fella sitting in a chair. He's a giant hulk of 300 pounds, six foot ten, and the chair will support him. There'll be a fight, he'll pick up the chair and hit it over somebody's head, and it smashes into sidereens. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing about those saloons, have you ever seen, how many, how many cowboy pictures have you seen in your life? Thousands of us. Have you ever seen a lavatory in any of them? <laughs> have you ever seen a sign that says, lavatory, or gents, or men, or female, or women? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, where do they go, those people? They're all in the bar, eating beans and drinking beer all day. <laughs> they don't even fart, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Probably do, that's why they're shooting off those guns all the time. <laughs> Got a fart coming up. <laughs> and so, the, I mean, all those places, you never see any manure, do you? You never see any manure in any of those cars. You see the horses tied up outside the bar for bloody hours. They come out after six or seven hours in the bar. There's not, e not even a pebble on nothing, not a little ball of crap, nothing. Horses sitting there. I mean, do they employ somebody in these movies to kind of shove corks up the anus of the curtain? <laughs> then the film is over in the evening. We're, we're All right, the corks are coming out. Step back. <laughs> I mean, you've seen stampedes, haven't you? Cattle, thousands and thousands of cattle stampede. And why do animals stampede? Because they're frightened. And what happens to every creature on God's earth when you're frightened? Your anal nerve goes. <laughs> you defecate yourself. You cannot help it. You see 3,000 cattle tearing down, petrified, panicked, bloody eyes. The dust clears. Not one tiny piece of shit anywhere. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. Well, there we are. That's that for a start. I shall be back in a moment to do this again. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much. You've been a lovely audience to work to. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed it. And whatever God you support, uh, I hope that God is good to you and he will guide you gently through a very happy, peaceful, and above all, contented life. Good night. Thank you.